Yo, what up? It's Chris. I uh, hope you're doing well out here on the land. Uh, I want to check in with y'all. Ooh, look at that magnolia tree back there. Oh, yeah. All right. So up here, upstate New York, and want to check in. I've been spending some time up in the woods, uh, out in the garden, tilling, getting up, trying to fix up the shed over there. You know, just a lot of time by myself or with Melissa, maybe one other person. Um, but like, not a lot of TV, not a lot of media influence, not a lot of newspaper talk, not a lot of people that are driven to talk about these things. Um, and it's been reaffirming, feels good, get my feet back in the dirt. Uh, I've been thinking a bunch though about like <clears throat> the anxiety and the fear that a lot of people have and like the reality of folks weren't around each other for a couple years due to pandemic. And in the return to quote unquote normalcy, things aren't back to normal. Like food's mad expensive, uh, jobs aren't available. And then people that are trying to hire people are having difficulty hiring people. The economy is still all jammed up. Traveling, getting your passport and paperwork done, government activities, administrative processes, still all mucked up. Live music and entertainment is not fully back. Uh, there's a writer strike. You can get into the international political affairs. There's all types of stuff going on that has people all freaked out. <clears throat> and I'm seeking solidarity. I'm seeking connectivity amongst humans. I'm seeking understanding that we're going to be different. And in the same way that, yes, I want you to understand my political, social, religious, spiritual, human beliefs that I'm going to have to understand other people's. And so I've been trying to travel, meet people, talk to people. Um, and with the Internet and the prevalence of the Internet influencing people. So it's not just like, well, if I avoid the media then it doesn't get to me it gets filtered through other people like the original meme is a thought worm that's like in your brain it's like a sound or a song or a phrase and you keep repeating it and you want to share it with other people and you can't get it out your head and so humans do that before the internet now with the internet we've gotten really good at directing those memes and giving us a stimulation to then send us off so that we go find other people to be like, did you see what happened with Trump? Did you see what happened with Biden? Did you see what happened with this company? Did you see what Amazon did? Did you see what the black people did? Did you see what the Jewish people did? Did you see what the gay people did? Did you see what the women did? did you, the country's falling apart. And that's basically kind of the conclusion on a lot of the stuff. The country's falling apart. The world's falling apart. Like, oh, climate kid whole world's falling apart. No, nuclear weapons, whole world's falling apart. Paramilitary policing, whole world's falling apart. Oh, uh, everything, you know, like, and I get why that's present. I mean, there, there's a reality to what's happening in our political situation, our economic situation, climate, but there's also reality to how beautiful the world still is. And so don't forget, you know, the world's very beautiful out there. Um, and when you're getting information so the question comes up with chat gbt and with all these ai models and now people are like oh my god ai realize that your brain is a computational device right your brain's an organically formed analogy-based problem-solving computational device and predictive engine now an abacus is a form of a computer your brain's a form of a computer our contemporary version of a computer with like the the hardware and software and uh diodes and uh transistors and silicone based chips or cadmium or cobalt or whatever the stuff is made out of our version of computers is is one type and with uh machine learning that's not that it's not something that just came out this year uh artificial intelligence not something that just came out this year but with its prevalence and it's like access to a wide consumer base and like the idea of like adoption being um far more prevalent than any other time in my life it raises the question of how do we know it's real how do you manage copyrights how do you know like the artwork hasn't been changed how do you know the writing hasn't been changed you know right now there are people that are part of the writers guild and they're fighting to make sure that computers aren't going to change their scripts without their input or influence and if the idea of our human creative brain has been the seat of all these creative works for how long now computers will control it that might be frightening to a person like me where i know the computers have no understanding of the black experience uh, why because they don't use us as the basis for normative right like computers use data in order to form their world of activity and behavioral patterns and they don't have the data on us. Like no one, no one ever studied black folks enough to then put us into data sets for a computer to properly represent us to someone else. Now, 
that then takes me to, so what do you do? You gonna cry? I'm not, all right? Like, my phone doesn't even work all the time. I'm not worried about the computers taking over and the robots controlling everything. I think humans are still very greedy and selfish and they're gonna want to, more, want to have more control than the computers. But the robot dogs are in New York City and they will be conducting investigations. That's a whole nother, we're going to, you think I'm bluffing, but no, like little robot dogs, look it up, Boston Dynamics, they, okay. Anyway, uh, but when it comes to information, I would say this, really, really dig in and, and think about your grandparents, your great grandparents, old people, where they didn't believe nothing. Now, I don't mean you don't actually believe anything. What I mean is like, how do you then take information and verify it or legitimize it, right? So one element is like, I'm somewhat of a skeptic. Skeptic, You present me with information. I want to know the sources. I want to know why you're telling me. I want to know who you are. I want to know where you got your information. Can that information be corroborated? Are there other people that say the same thing? What are the arguments against what you're saying? I just want all the information about it so then I can make an accurate decision, right? So when you're talking to people and they don't want to tell you where they get the information, they don't know where they got it, they can't source it, they can't give you any specifics, they can't say what the influences are, like, right? We have to admit to our own biases and that, like, as a human, I am biased in almost any thoughts I have. That bias doesn't mean it's always negative or that, like, I never know what I'm talking about. But I have to be honest about my biases and what predispositions I have coming into a conversation, right? And then you have to understand the economic influence. You have to understand the, the political hegemonic influence of why information is being shared. And then look at how does it affect you, right? Like are people considering other perspectives when presenting arguments, information? Um, is there a context? Is, is there a frame of reference? Is there historical uh, placement? So that we have some way to actually make decisions. Because right now, if I go on the internet and, and I look up like how to buy property, right? Like I wanna get a 22 acre property with the green and the magnolia tree and the, all that, right? I can go on the internet and find a whole bunch of people that say, you can get a house for zero down. You can spend other people's money. You can go into debt, yada, yada, yada. They don't tell you the full truth, right? I can go on the internet right now and all these people that are doing um, fitness and nutritional educational platforms or like classes or like their mentors or their instructors and these people have plastic surgery they be on steroids it's like liver king like yeah only eat liver and you'll get diesel like me and the bama's on steroids you know um if you look at the the nature of politics we know the bama's lie to us when you look at the corporations we know the bama's lie to us when we look at like oh everyone reveres elon musk the bama's family profiteer doing apartheid time Africa. Why would I have any faith in what that man is going to say or do? When I look at people who, who are blatant Islamophobes, people who are... Hello, Melissa, how you doing? <laughs> you know, people who are, are blatantly hateful, but because they made money, we want to follow and listen to them? Uh, I, I don't understand it. And and looking at entertainment, like, again, I like to go to the old school. My mom is very smart. My grandmother is very smart. And they were on some old, like, why would you believe anything out of Hollywood, yo? Like, it's all fake. It's entertainment. They tell you. So uh, so keep in mind, where are the sources, right? And, and what do you do when, for me, I'm lucky enough where I can listen to what my grandparents said and they were right about some things. I can listen to what my mom said, my aunt, other people in my family, what they've said, and they were correct. Like they, they had a really good understanding of certain things in society. Uh, not everyone's fortunate enough to have that experience. So what do you do if you can't trust your family members? You can't trust your community. You can't trust the government. You can't trust corporations. You can't trust the media. You can't trust any source of knowledge or information. And that's a serious question. And so I'm gonna say, go to your heart. Like, like really, it, sit with it go to your heart because right now whatever's happening don't believe it you see all these rappers talking about what black culture is guess what white people decide which black rappers get to tell you what happens you see all these people out here discussing what feminism is or isn't who's controlling the actual platforms of this material getting out to you it's it's wild that like when you think of critical race theory became a real conversation. You know what critical race theory is? Is just saying 
interpret history through the accurate lens in America. So like in America, race is such an issue that it's in the constitution, but we want to take it out of all the conversations now. Now the gun people don't want to take out the constitution in their conversation. Like they like, yo, we allowed to have guns. It's in the constitution. The constitution is important in 2023. Yeah, and you know, it got signed however many hundred years ago, but it's important. Well, so then in the constitution where it says that black people will be counted as three fifths of a person when it comes to voting and representation rights for taxation, that that's in the constitution. And so black folks and what has happened to black folks and the way this country progressed is directly tied to that. Like literally, would America be what it is now if Africans weren't brought here? No, like literally you could not have what we have in America. If the natives weren't killed and their land stolen, would we have America? No, like literally America is a combination of not just European immigrants of people that came here for freedom. We know also that a whole bunch of the people that came here are, were criminals and they were fleeing. And just like folks got shipped to Australia uh, and a lot of places in Europe, it was like, oh, you want to go to jail or go to America? <laughs> or you're already incarcerated. We're sending you to America. Get out of here. Um, or it's like pirates and all types of, you know, scallywags. But anyway, the, this idea of like you teaching critical race theory is just fixing that for the past 100 years, 150 years since there's been an organized school system, they have been lying. Like, that's the thing that for the, the beginning, since the beginning of the education system in America, they've been lying. So right now when folks are like, yo, uh, the liberals are trying to indoctrinate you. No, they not. The liberals don't even get the black experience. All right. So they're not trying to indoctrinate the white folks and make white folks hate each other and da 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 People who are black have been trying to say, just teach the truth. And the truth usually gets parsed out when you start using that critical race theory lens. When in reference to the history of functionalism and structuralism, symbolic interaction, conflict theory, postmodernism, yada, 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 all these other forms of understanding society. Critical race theory tends to be the best one for sussing out how important it's been for people to be white for people not to be white, how stigmatized being black has been. I mean, right now we get in discussions of, of identity. This whole notion of black white made up, it's fake. Black people didn't make it up. So on that note, I'm gonna go back outside, enjoy the weather and say, please research, please learn, please study, please find some sources that you find it be legitimate. Please talk about it with other people that differ in opinion. Please keep searching. Please do not get comfortable in your own ideas and thoughts and feelings and think that that's the end all be all. Um, and, and please be tender to yourself. Be tender to the other people in the community. Be, be tender to the people you've never met. Um, if you can be tender to the nature and, and listen to the birds out. And, and let's build, let's connect. Let's come together. Let's have the difficult conversations. Know that when I get hype and I'm all like, yo, these people, I'm actually not saying that like we got beef. It's that I'm excited. And so, uh, you know, be passionate. All right, I'm gonna hang out under the grape arbor. Talk to Melissa for a second. Yeah. Peace.